watching Dial Day Boxing Nation. So when you, if you win, you said all that, if you win, I'm not on my contract. Let's make the fight happen since you want to talk crazy. Let's, let's, let's do that. I want to fight you if you win. Devin Haney. I love it. Uh Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? So you heard that clip that I just played for you, or at least the two audio clips, both of those clips, that was Javante Tank Davis talking. But in the second clip, you heard Javante saying to Devin Haney, Let's go ahead and make it happen. If you want to talk crazy, Devin Haney, he responded to Davis and he said, Davis could be my mandatory. If he wanted, then he can get it. He can become my mandatory. He can push for it. Let me just start by saying this. It is very rare in the sport of boxing to see someone with the skill set that Devin Haney has that truly has the confidence and wants all of the smoke. And I say this, because Devin Haney is the undisputed champion in the lightweight division. And yet, he's still calling out the best and the most dangerous fighters in his division. And Javante is claiming that he wants to do the same thing. Because he called out the undisputed champion, Devin Haney, as you guys heard in that clip right there. It sounded like Javante was very serious when he said it. We know Devin Haney is serious. He's been calling out these cats since day one. Since he was 20 years old, he's wanted all the smoke. So Devin Haney, he brought up a great point when he said, look, man, if you serious about the fight, now all you have to do is activate the mandatory. For those of you guys who don't know, uh, Javante Tank Davis is the regular WBA champion and Devin Haney is the super WBA champion. The WBC, the WBA, excuse me, they've already said they want to consolidate all of their belts. They want to get rid of all the additional belts and have one champion in each division. So in that situation, all it takes is for Javante Tank Davis to activate his mandatory. And we've got another mega fight in the sport of boxing. Another all-American affair. This is another Spence versus Crawford type of match. You know, all of us knew deep down, even the racists knew deep down that when we were talking about the Fantastic Four, right? Javante Tank Davis, Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia, and Teofimo Lopez. Everyone knew deep down it was going to be Javante Tank Davis and Devin Haney that were going to be the last two standing. And that's pretty much how it played out. Teofimo Lopez, he couldn't even get past his own cherry-picked opponent in George Cambosis. And when it comes to Ryan Garcia... No one even takes him serious anymore because he cried wolf too many times. But this could be the first time that there actually really is a wolf in the yard. And Ryan Garcia is telling the truth, meaning he might be serious about taking the Javante Tang Davis fight now. I mean, after he beat the other dude, Tago or whatever his name was, Ryan was asked, does he want Javante Tang Davis next? And surprisingly, Ryan said, you know what, man, I'm not even going to throw out names. I'm not going to talk about fights that are not going to happen. You know, I did that before and I don't want to upset my fans or lie to my fans. He actually said that. And it was very, very surprising because for the very first time, Ryan Garcia, he was sounding realistic. So after he said that about maybe a couple months after he said that in his post fight interview in the Tago fight, he then started to call out Javante Tank Davis. And I'm starting to get the idea that it's gotten to the point, you know, Ryan, he keeps saying he had talked to Leonard Ellerby at the uh, Javante uh, Romero fight. And he told Leonard Ellerby, you know, F golden boy, you know, I want the fight. They can't stop me from taking the fight. I'm going to get this fight. No, no one's going to stop me from taking this Javante Tank Davis fight. He kept saying that over and over. Then Oscar De La Hoya came out and he said that we're interested in making the fight. And then Ryan Garcia, of course, he started promoting the Javante Tank Davis fight. Like, that's his very next fight this month. You know, he doesn't even really mention Fortuna's name anymore. He's only mentioning Javante Tank Davis's name. I think Oscar De La Hoya and Golden Boy, they've gotten to the point to where they realize Ryan Garcia's career is stuck in neutral right now. Because it's not a Jake Paul situation. When it comes to Jake Paul, Jake Paul can fight whoever he wants. 
and it's going to be a big, huge event, right? When it comes to Ryan Garcia, him fighting Tago, him fighting Javier Fortuna, Oscar De La Hoya is not making a whole lot of money off of fights like that. So I truly feel Oscar, he's down willing to gamble. He's willing to cash out if he has to and put Ryan Garcia in there against Javante Tank Davis. Now, while Devin Haney's stock has shot up and Javante Tank Davis, he's the biggest star in all of boxing right now, especially when it comes to America. Ryan Garcia's star status is dwindling. So this is my point. We all know that if Javante can fight Ryan Garcia before a Devin Haney fight, he's definitely going to take the Ryan Garcia fight because they want to promote this fight as the modern day Floyd Mayweather versus Oscar De La Hoya fight. So this is the thing. The only way we should not be getting the Javante Tank Davis versus Devin Haney fight for undisputed for all of the belts. The only way we shouldn't be getting that fight next is if Javante Tank Davis is going to be fighting against Ryan Garcia next. If Ryan Garcia decides to cap again, he has another anxiety attack and pulls out of the Javante Tank Davis fight, then once again, there's no other fight that makes sense in the sport of boxing other than Javante Tank Davis versus Devin Haney for all of the belts. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. All right, now check this out, guys. If you're looking to repair eczema scars, burns and bruises, dark spots and blemishes, then this right here is the perfect product for you guys. It's called L.O. Dekey Face and Body Oil. Athletes and top-ranking boxers, they're also using it after training to reduce swelling, inflammation, and to ease the pain. So get yours today. Go to LODekey.com, like them on Facebook, and follow them on Instagram. Let me tell you guys about Issa Israel Law Firm. It is a full-service legal practice based in Denver, Colorado, an emerging hub for combat sports and high-altitude training. If you're a fighter inside or outside of the ring and you need a law firm you can trust to fight for you, visit thefighterfirm.com or email help at iilawfirm.com. Legal representation is usually limited to plaintiffs and defendants in Colorado, but iFirm can help anyone in the world with trademarking their business name, logos, and U.S. immigration issues. This brother has been my attorney for a while and helped guide me through all kinds of business and civil issues, so make sure you guys go to thefighterfirm.com. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the big day. SMPs at Scout Carolinas. I need a real restoration. This is my makeover right here. So. Fellas, I've got some great news for you. If you've lost your hair or have a receding hairline, the time has come when you can finally get your hairline back through a process called scalp micropigmentation. So here's how it works. It's a hair tattoo that replicates the look of your hair follicles when you have fully shaved it down. So to get this hookup, make sure you follow and contact my man Scalp Carolinas on Instagram.